Hello, dear saints. This is your Pastor Roy Olson, your missionary to Romania. Having some thoughts today, I'd love to share to you with you about the love of God. The love of God, the uh, psalmist said, is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. Even though we've tried to describe it and write about it and sing about it, the writer says it, it goes beyond anything that we can even write or sing about. And the Bible speaks about the love of God so much that it's like a liquid gold. The gospel message opens up with, for God so loved the world. It's not talking about planet Earth, it's talking about the inhabitants of planet Earth. That means you. God so loved the world that he did something about it. Another song, this love is mine. I know it. God gave his son to show it. What kind of love could God have for us that he would allow his son to come to earth and be subjected to the re rejection and the suffering And he asks us, who has believed our report? Who has the arm of the Lord believed? Um, who has the you know, arm of the Lord? It's, it's, it's beyond, and it, it, it depends on, do we believe this message or not? Who hath believed our report? What report? Well, the report of the love of God, the power of God, the strength of God, we're focusing today on the, the love of God. Trying to describe the love, love is something like uh, the young man said about his mother's plum pie. He says, well, I could talk about it all day, but you got to taste it. And then you'll know. That one taste is beyond all the words that I can ever use to describe plum pie, the love of God. I think the love of God has been emphasized in scripture because it's so hard for us to believe it. We have been inculcated with the Santa Claus mentality. Going to find out who's naughty and nice. If you're naughty and nice, you get nothing. But if you've been Mr. Goody Two Shoes, you get a gift. But the Bible reverses that and says, before we knew him, God loved us. And uh, you, my dear friend, struggling because of your imperfection, because of you're having disappointed yourself, never mind disappointing God. And you wonder, could that possibly be true, that God should love you just the way you are now? And the answer is absolutely. Trying to describe the love of God. <clears throat> Bible never says that Oh, well, God loved this person with half of his love. And this one he loved eh, a little bit more, maybe 60%. Oh, that guy, only 20%. No, the Bible is very clear that God can only love one way. Because it's a very fabric of his nation, nature. Uh, he is, he, he's the epitome, he's the, the throne of, he's the, the source of all love. And he can only love with all of his heart 100%.
Well, we say, uh, you know, Jesus spoke about the love of God for him, the love of the Father, God the Father for God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. But the astounding thing about that is Jesus said that as the Father hath loved me with the same measure, uh, the passion, depth that God the Father has for God the Son, Jesus says, so have I loved you. The measure of God's love for you, dear brother, dear sister, dear troubled one, hear me, please. God loves you. Jesus Christ loves you as much as God the Father loves God the Son. The same measure, the same profundity, the same depth, the same breadth, the same height that the Father has for the Son, the love. So the Son has for you. Right now, not when you're perfect, not when you get to heaven. Now, now, just in your pitiful situation where you find yourself right now look up and know that god loves you and jesus gave us a secret <clears throat> you know we can be so sin focused so perfection focused <laughs> excuse me that we focus on our failure on our sin on our shortcomings and jesus said Abide in my love. Abide there. Stay there. Think about it. Study about it. Pray about it. Uh, believe it. Uh, study the scriptures about it. The love of Jesus Christ for the world, yes, but for, for me, for you personally. Well, how can God love somebody imperfect? Well, if God, if, God, if God loves the world, the only kind he's got in the world is imperfect people. Like Peter, like Paul, like Moses, like Samson. You notice that he's in the chapter 11 of Hebrews amongst the what we call heroes of faith. And we know his failure. We know his weakness. David, God loves you. Imperfect though you may be. And the Apostle Paul, having looked beyond into what he describes as a third heaven, <clears throat> he saw things, he heard things, he knew things, and probably you and I have too. You know, I, as a preacher, confess to you, I preach better than I live. I know about the, the depth and the breadth and the height of the love of God. I know how to walk. I've been in the presence of God. I have lived there. I have seen. I have heard. And I wish I lived there all the time, every day, 24 hours a day. The fact is I don't. I want to, but I don't. One day I will. But <clears throat> like the Apostle Paul, I press towards the mark. Dear sister, dear brother, you press towards the mark. You know something, you see something, you've experienced something. And the, you, you lament the fact that you're not there 24 7 and he pressed toward the mark what that high calling of god in christ jesus what is that christ in you the hope of glory the 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 eternal measure of god's love how long will it last he said i've loved you with an everlasting, repeat, everlasting love. That's how long he will love you. 
Oh, Pastor Roy. Oh, I get so many. Oh, Pastor Roy. In fact, I even give myself some of those old Pastor Roy things uh, also. But it gives me great comfort to think about my own love for my children. Three children, each one so different. One brings me joy. And others, less so. Do I love any un, any one of them less? No, I, I don't. I don't. Well, they misbehave. Yes, I know. Gives me pain. But do I reject them? Not on your life, boy. They're my flesh and blood. They're my children. You are God's child. To those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, even to them that received him, to them gave you power to become sons of God. I have loved you with an everlasting love, the Lord said. How long does the everlasting last? Forever, of course. And then what is the depth of it? It's the infinite in nature. There can exist no greater love than the love that God has for his children and you in particular. Take it home, bank on it, trust it, believe it. And as Jesus said, abide in it. Don't abide in your sin and your shame and your inadequacy. Abide in his love. The love of God that's shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. If we live that way, we will love that way because out of the abundance of the heart comes the love of God. We love him because he first loved us. So, dear friend, I'm thinking today about the love of God. Yeah, think about the love of God for me because sometimes I don't feel very adequate. But he loves me. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave his son to win. His heir and child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. Oh, love of God, how rich. How pure, how measureless, how strong it shall ever more endure the saints and angels song. Thanks for listening, dear friend. God bless you. Remember, God loves you far more than you can even comprehend. And to the love, to know the love of Christ that passes not. Abide in his love today. God bless you and I'll be back. Goodbye.